The Leadership Orbit Attracting the Right Followers Many people have passion. Many people have goals. But the leaders of this generation needs more. They need to have vision, mission, a strategy or plan of action, execution, and the desire for continuous improvement of the plan and execution. The Leadership Orbit Attracting the Right Followers this presentation introduces the idea of using the Law of Attraction and the Leadership Orbit to attract the right followers. This presentation will answer the following. What differentiates leaders? What is the Leadership Orbit? And how can the Leadership Orbit be used to achieve your goals? Hello, this is Laura Lee Rose, author of the books Time Peace, Making Peace with Time, and the Book of Answers, 105 Career Critical Situations. And I'm a business and efficiency coach that specializes in career management, time management, project management, and work-life balance strategies. I help busy professionals and entrepreneurs create effective systems so that they can comfortably delegate to others and have time to enjoy life even if they don't have the time to learn new technology or train their staff. At the end of the day, I give people the peace of mind that everything is getting done exactly the way they want. Wamel asked me to talk about why leaders should understand, utilize, and teach their followers certain concepts, such as technology, innovation, marketing, finance, and many other things. We will not only answer this question, but how to attract followers that already understand this and much, much more. Before we go into that, I want you to know what makes me an expert in this. I grew up in the IT and software development industry. I started off as a developer and programmer. My customer perspective led me into testing and I became a hiring and firing manager of both developers and testers. As a development manager, I created a customer-focused program called the Design Partner Program. We invited high-profile clients to be part of our design and development team. Those clients participated in our various milestone reviews, spec reviews, and test lab sessions. This program became so successful that the IBM Rational brand not only adopted it across departments, but incorporated and highlighted it into their biannual software user conferences. Even though I left the company in 2009, the Design Partner Program is going strong. I also hold five patents, one of which is on business processes. The others are product-based. While in the corporate environment, I published many articles and spoke at many technical conferences. All of these experiences I now use in my coaching business. I only mention these things to show you that anything is possible. So, what is the leadership orbit? And how can the leadership orbit be used to benefit us? We all feel that a leader is one who shows us the way. We all want our leaders to also walk the talk. And we usually see leaders depicted with followers simply trailing their leaders. Regardless of their titles, leaders are teachers to their very core. But leaders are also stronger when their supporters are not trailing their leaders or being pulled by the leader. The leader is stronger when their followers are cohorts and strong leaders in their own right. So how does a leader collect or attract fans or followers in the first place? The simple answer is that the leader attracts followers that are interested in the same causes, goals, and outcome. The leader is a strong magnet. The leader attracts others that share his or her passions, ideas, determination, and goals. So, if the leader is a magnet, 
then the leader is more likely to attract in a circular fashion versus a straight line. So when you envision a more circular assembly, it's not too far off to envision the followers captured in your magnetic orbit. So once you extend into the leadership orbit idea, you can recognize other similarities to a solar system. The more advanced leader can create an orbit with members that are also leaders in their own right. Those members attract others around them, bringing their followers or communities into your sphere of influence. As they develop their own expertise, their own business, and their own followers, your authority, business, and followers expand. Very much like our sun, planets, and moons in our solar system. The leadership orbit isn't motivated by ego. With the leadership orbit methodology, you develop and collaborate with every member of your group. You continue to cultivate other leaders within your sphere. Then leadership becomes more than one person. It becomes an entire system. If implemented correctly, the leadership orbit is self-sustaining ever-growing and larger than any single person in the system. What assists one in the system assists all. On the other hand, for your vision and mission to become a self-reliant organism, the leadership orbit needs to take advantage of the sphere of influence of every member of your community. You need to allow and encourage others to lead from their center and attract to themselves. This is very similar to the sun in our solar system. Our sun has planets revolving and rotating around it, and each of those planets are rotating on its individual axis and has their moons and satellites orbiting around them. The sun isn't working hard to keep the planets in its orbit. The sun isn't laboring to keep everyone moving in the right direction. The sun is merely being the sun. Hold on. I thought this was a talk on leadership, and all of a sudden we're talking solar systems and revolving planets. I'm just one person. Well, the secret to the leadership orbit is that you focus on being you, and all the other pieces fall into place auto-magically. Let's take it one step at a time. A leader has a community of followers, but how does one collect a following or create a fan base? Leaders start within themselves. All leaders have a passion, a vision, and a mission, but many people have passions. Many people have individual goals. What differentiates a great leader from everyone else is that the leader's passions and goals are often bigger than her or himself. Their mission or vision affects and encompasses a larger community or global concern. The larger the vision, the more people are attracted. This is logical because you cannot attract a large following if you are only concerned with small goals. At the same time, a leader does not seek a larger picture just for the sake of it. They are authentically and innately passionate about some version of their goal. So how would you go about it? It can start off small, for example, getting into shape. That may turn into a movement to eliminate child obesity and inactivity by creating fitness programs that engages children and families. It can start off as eliminating schoolyard bullying in your child's school, and it turns into a mission to empower and educate all students on how to identify and diffuse conflicts as well as how to handle difficult situations. So, try to take your passion and make it bigger. Blow it up, just like the original Big Bang. Once you have a big picture mission or vision, you will want to create a well-developed plan on how to accomplish your mission. This plan can be your career plan, your business plan, 
your life plan, whatever you want to focus your time and energy. You then need to execute your plan and then continually improve your execution. And of course, there are lots of pieces to each stage. Lots of pieces to the planning phase. Lots of pieces to the execution phase. Then there is an unending cycle of improvement to each planning and execution piece. You will never really be done. It will always be a work in progress. That is why you need to select something that you are really passionate and have fun with it. You really need to enjoy the ride because it will never end. Okay, now this seems like a lot of work, but this is where the law of attraction comes into play. The law of attraction is the belief that by focusing on positive and negative thoughts, a person brings positive or negative experiences into their life. The law of attraction is believed to be the attractive magnetic power of the universe that draws similar energies together. It manifests through the power of creation everywhere and in many ways. Even the law of gravity is part of the law of attraction. This law attracts thoughts, ideas, people, situations, and circumstances. Because the vision is now of global interest, you are in a good position to attract others that have similar interests, goals, and passions. Because you have a plan, you can start sharing with individuals with common interests. You can now use marketing to attract your followers and cohorts. And because you are actually following through and executing on your plan, you are quickly building credibility, reliability, and authority in your field. Because you are enjoying the ride, people are starting to notice. People are being drawn into you and your message. People with same attitudes, drives, philosophies, and desires are being pulled towards you. Because you are having fun, fun people are attracted, adding more fun to the ride. Now is the time to be very specific regarding the type of followers that you want to attract. By attracting the right fan base, much of this hard work can easily be distributed to those volunteers that love that kind of work. But you need to be very clear in what you want to accomplish, how you want to accomplish it, and why you want to succeed. That is why you need your plans and strategies. As new people come into your orbit, you may need to modify your plans and strategies slightly because of the new resources following you. That is a good thing, but the mission and vision needs to stay constant. You need to consistently deliver on your promises and have regular contact and communication with your members. Otherwise, it will be as if you turned off the gravitational pull in your solar system and all your planets and satellites will fly off and be pulled into another leader's orbit. So, if you find that your mission or vision is constantly changing, then your vision is not big enough. It is not general enough. Keep working on your vision. Take it up a level. Once you have your plan in place, you need to follow through. So, continue to work on self, say what you do and do what you say, and walk your talk. If you cannot follow through or execute on your rhetoric, your magnetic powers will wane. Once you have a plan, you need to really follow through. The follow through is what creates your reputation, credibility, and integrity. Many people make plans, and even big plans, but plans can easily become lip service. Without execution, without action, there is no manifestation. Results are what gives you credibility, which attracts more worthy followers. The law of attraction states that if you are only providing lip service, you will attract others that only provide lip service, and nothing significant will be achieved except a lot of noise. Followers that actually produce may be attracted at first, 
but will lose interest quickly once results are lacking. Without continued action and results, there is no materialization, no tangible accomplishments. The accomplishments and results are what gives you the credibility to attract more worthy and capable followers. And the more competent followers you attract, the more you can achieve. On the other hand, the execution phase cannot be forced. A leader wants to be aligned with their plan before executing. Otherwise, the results will not be as he or she expects. The ride will not be fun. But the good leader does not wait until she is aligned. If she doesn't feel aligned, her work is to now actively align herself so that she can take action as quickly as possible. So, if there is a piece of your plan that you are resistant to, that is the time to find a way to feel better about that piece. So let's talk more about that. You have your plan, your business plan, career plan, life plan, whatever your focus. Your plan is similar to what people familiar with the law of attraction call a vision board. But your plan is more detailed and specific. Within the strategy, you will consider financial considerations, how to expose and expand your vision through proper marketing, identify an execution timeline to increase your credibility, Recognize the need for various resources such as equipment, tools, locations, volunteers, and staff members. Your strategy should also include a growth plan and exit strategy. For instance, do you hope to sell your company? Franchise it? Hand it down to your children? Decide this now. You feel good and positive about the general pieces. Your financial plan and fiscal management your marketing to help spread the word about your work, your project management timelines to make the most of your events and services, your needed resources in regards to space, equipment, tools, and staff or volunteers. But maybe there are sections of your plan that you are uncomfortable about and maybe you are avoiding executing that piece. Unfortunately, you need all the pieces to make it work seamlessly. I'm not saying that if you have a few pieces missing that you will not accomplish your goal. I'm saying that it would be more difficult to create and to sustain for any length of time. But just because it's a must do doesn't mean that you must do it. Don't just share your vision with others but your needs to accomplish your vision. This allows people in your orbit to step in and offer their talents to your vision. If that is not their passion or talent, they may know someone that it is perfect for. This pulls even more followers into your energy. The key to allowing this is to create an atmosphere that attracts the right players, the right followers. But you have to be in a place to realize this. That's part of the planning and strategy piece. But you don't need to have all the pieces in place to start executing. When the pieces fall into place and things line up for the execution, go for it. That piece may be the exact piece that will attract the right funding or sponsorship to complete one of the incomplete pieces. But if you don't know what the incomplete pieces are or what is missing, you cannot recognize when that missing piece is standing right in front of you. This is where project management steps in. If you have a strategic plan set, you need to start moving the pieces along a timeline that allows you to find and continue to pave the way to success. Quick example. You want to launch your book and sell it over the Christmas holidays. And you envision a grand weekend event of speakers to launch and sell your book. So in order to generate interest and in buyers for the book and event, you need to accomplish several tasks. Create your website, create your book page, continue to engage your social media posts and blogs to excite people about your book and event, schedule several speaking engagements to meet new people interested in what you have to say in the book, schedule media coverage and interviews on the book, 
you want to schedule a huge event to launch and sell your book in December, get other notable authors to recommend and give you testimonials on your book, provide a free chapter to others to taste test the book, ask people to share your free chapters with others, and the list goes on. All these pieces seem disconnected, although they are all required to have a successful book launch. This is where project management skills are required. For instance, you want to have a large special event to launch your book, but right now you don't have the funds to actually put it on. Some Law of Attraction novice would say, okay, I can't take action until I'm fully aligned with this. I'm not going to feel good about this piece right now, so I'm just going to hold here. But great leaders find a way to feel good about this situation, and that means finding a way to collect the proper funds for the event. As a project manager, you need to outline everything that is required to put on this event. So you don't have the funds. You need to find the funds. So you start networking with the funding needs in mind. At every event, speaking engagement, or blog article, you focus on attracting sponsors and investors, how to sell additional services and products, sell affiliated partner products for commission, sell your resources with affiliated partners for referral fees, ask mentors for their advice, invite notable authors and speakers to speak at your event, you create websites and web pages and forms that allow people to pre-order and prepay for the book at a discount and possibly free admission to your event. You create videos, audios, blogs to spread the interest in your books and pre-orders. You attend other events regarding the same interest and meet other followers. You co-sponsor an event with other leaders in the same industry to meet their followers and then invite them to your event. You sell vendor tables at your event. You interview other leaders in the same industry to be introduced to their followers, and then you invite them to your event. You can certainly accomplish the above task. They don't seem so far-fetched now because you will be working, meeting, talking to people that are already sharing your vision and passion. These strangers are already your friends. They are already a member of your sorority or sisterhood. Working towards the goal feels much better than just hanging out, fretting that nothing is moving forward. So, in this instance, the act of taking action on certain things actually makes you feel better about the situation. Remember, everything is connected. Project management skills allow you to align the different pieces to more easily and timely create the full, big picture. You don't need to locate every single puzzle piece and where it belongs in the big picture at the beginning of the process. You are continually discovering the proper location for each piece, but at the same time, you need to have the pieces available, generally know all the pieces that are needed for your puzzle. That is the project management. If you don't have the project management skills, you need to find someone to fill that gap, preferably someone that is interested in your cause because that will be more fun and they will be able to see things that are missing from your plan that someone that is not tuned in into your vision would. The Learn, Commit, and Do Upward Spiral Stephen Covey says, moving along the upward spiral requires us to learn, commit, and do on increasingly higher planes. We deceive ourselves if we think that any one of these is sufficient. To keep progressing, we must learn, commit, and do, learn, commit, and do, and learn, commit, and do again. And you do this with your mentors, your followers, and everyone in your orbit. This all sounds nice, but how do I implement this in my life? Maybe I'm not ready to lead a major movement. Well, the leadership orbit works in smaller arenas as well. Let's illustrate with a few smaller scenarios. Meet Mary. Her challenge is that she can't get any attention in the committee meetings. She feels that she has great ideas, but she doesn't have a strong presence in those meetings. 
Everyone feels free to interrupt in the meeting, but she's uncomfortable interrupting to get her voice heard. And when she tries to interrupt, it's a disaster. It's just not her. When she shares her frustration with coworkers, they call her a whiner and are very dismissive. After this presentation, she used the Leadership Orbit methodology. Her goal was to illustrate to her team that she had a good idea and that she wanted to present the idea calmly and confidently in the next staff meeting. The next step, she came up with a plan and strategy to accomplish that goal. She met with Nancy, the meeting facilitator, and shared her topic with Nancy. Mary told Nancy that she wanted to discuss this topic at the next staff meeting. Mary asked for 10 minutes on the agenda to share her proposal. Now the meeting facilitator is in Mary's orbit. Also, Mary knew that Jim and Harry has a tendency to interrupt in the meetings. So she met with each of them separately. She gave them a preview of her proposal and asked for their advice. They gave her some great ideas which she quickly folded into her proposal. Now they are also in her orbit. At the next staff meeting, Mary was at ease because she was confident in her pitch and she had the time allocated on the agenda. She started her pitch with thanks. She thanked the facilitator for the time on the agenda, and she thanked Jim and Harry for helping her with the proposal. She's on her way to increasing her sphere of influence. Stephanie has a dilemma. She has to give an unpopular direction to her department. She isn't looking forward to sharing these new procedures and predicts her team will have issues with it. She doesn't see how these new procedures will improve morale or corporate culture. In fact, the new procedures will slow her department's productivity rate. After watching this presentation, Stephanie realizes that if she disseminates these new procedures while she is expecting negative results, then she will get the exact reaction she is expecting. That's the law of attraction. She realizes that if she simply plays lip service to the new mandates, her employees will follow her lead as well. So, Stephanie approaches this problem with the leadership orbit in mind. Her goal was to be a valuable contributor to the company and help solve difficult situations. She wants to resolve this particular situation in a manner that benefits all involved. Next, she creates her plan and strategy. She realizes that the reason she was uncomfortable conveying this process to her group is because she is uncomfortable with the process. She herself is not aligned with this particular solution. So her plan was to fully understand the problem that this process is supposed to resolve and understand the consequences for not implementing the process. She met with Toby and Gail, the individuals that created the process. She started adding them to her leadership orbit. She worked with them to better understand the reasons. She shared her concerns along with some options to resolve those issues. They worked together to come up with a few modifications that resolved Stephanie's concern without costing any additional time, resources, or money. Toby, Gail, and Stephanie took those ideas to the executives. She worked together with the executives, Toby and Gail, to tweak the new process until everything fell into place. Now, she feels very comfortable and confident about sharing the new process with her team. She has also now added the executives to her leadership orbit. Margaret. Margaret simply wants to be seen as a leader in her division by providing meaningful value to her company. At the same time, Margaret understands that you need outside recognition before you can gain recognition in your own department. Her plan has several parts to increase her leadership orbit. Number one, focus on solutions that will increase revenue, increase customer satisfaction, and reduce costs for the entire company, not just her department. 
Number two, provide brown bag lunch presentations to share her knowledge in critical areas to illustrate that she is an expert in her field. Three, publish articles in her field of expertise that exposes the company as a leader in this area. Four, present at technical conferences, professional organizations, and seminars to both illustrate her expertise and learn from others. Number five, set up a mentor relationship with others that are already leaders in the company to learn from them. And number six, focus on being a service to other departments outside her specific department. So, as you see, whether your goal is large or small, a leader can take advantage of their leadership orbit. The trick is to select, then attract the right people. For example, what if Mary elected to continue to complain to coworkers about her situation? She would certainly attract other followers that felt the same. They would certainly be attracted into her orbit, but she would be no closer to achieving her goal of being a respected and valuable contributor to the committee. Instead, she set her sights on attracting followers that have talents that can help her achieve her goals. She sets her sights on attracting followers that she can help with their goals and that their goals, the leaders and followers, are complementary and in harmony. Leadership, in general, is a system, a process of sorts, that works in concert and in harmony. Earlier, we talked about creating a strategy or plan which could be used as a business plan, a career plan, a life plan, whatever you focus on. Even the smallest goal, as in Mary's meeting situation, needs a quick plan. Mary came up with a strategy. Her marketing and sales plan was to reach out to Nancy, Jim, and Harry. While her mission didn't cost her dollars, it did cost her time and energy. She had to allocate her time and energy to create a positive and quality pitch and proposal. She also had to execute her plan by the next staff meeting. Her resources included her presentation materials, as well as Nancy, Jim, and Harry. Stephanie's plan was very similar to Mary. Because she was not comfortable with the way the new procedures were being rolled out, she created a quick plan. She realized that she needed to do some research on both the problem that this procedure was supposed to solve, as well as the reason behind the specific solution. Mary knows that there is rarely just one right answer for a single problem, so she did her research. Her marketing plan was to sell Toby and Gail on the idea of some changes into the new procedures. They then needed to sell the plan to the executives. Her timeline was that she wanted to complete this before the mandated deadline for the rollout. So, it's worthwhile to take the time to create a strategy regardless of the size of your goal. Most people are uncomfortable with marketing and sales. They feel uneasy trying to persuade others or ask for something of value in exchange for their intellectual property. But if you're fully aligned with your goal, your vision, and your commitments, sharing your plans with others should be easy. Simply put, sharing your plans with others is another name for marketing and sales. Mary, Stephanie, and Margaret all realized how marketing increased their influence over others. They took the initiative to business network with strategic people, people that could help them achieve their specific goals. Mary wanted to increase her influence in the committee meetings, so she networked and built a relationship with the meeting facilitator. She marketed her idea to Nancy, and she actually sold the idea not for cash, but for 10 minutes on the agenda. Stephanie wanted a smoother rollout for a controversial new process, so she business networked with the architects of the proposal. She made sure she understood the reasons for the new procedures and what problem they were trying to solve. 
she brought her concerns to that team and they worked out a better solution. They then pitched the changes to the executive teams together. She sold her innovations not for cash but for the opportunity to roll out a process that took into consideration her department's concerns and goals. Margaret's goals are a little more sophisticated. Her marketing strategy is a little more complicated. I leave this exercise for you. Tonight, as practice, outline a marketing strategy to attract the right supporters to accomplish Margaret's goal. You probably know someone that always talks in platitudes and generalities. They avoid making any commitments because they feel that avoiding details and commitments is better than missing a deadline or breaking a commitment. No one can accuse them of being wrong if they never really say anything specific or promise anything specific. Unfortunately, ambiguity and vagueness works against a leader. It creates confusion and frustration because it leaves room for misinterpretation and incorrect expectations. When you allow your audience to freely interpret as they see fit, they normally hear what they want to hear. Therefore, they are actually hearing a commitment in your verbiage and you end up setting expectations that were not your intentions. Avoiding commitments is also a sign of self-doubt. The only reason to avoid agreeing to any type of deadline is because you don't think you're going to meet them. And since you want to protect your credibility and reliability, you avoid making the commitment altogether. But it just doesn't work like that. Think of your financial credit score. You build a good credit rating by actually borrowing money, making a commitment to pay off the loans regularly and on time, and then following through on those commitments. You don't build a credit by eliminating bills that you are required to pay on time and purchasing everything with cash. You can't build credit by owing no one. It's the same with your integrity and credibility. Leadership stems from announcing your intentions and then following through with them in a timely fashion. Without deliberate follow through, you have no results. And it's the results, or lack of results, that people notice. If you are exuding and radiating integrity, credibility, and success, you will attract these type of people into your leadership orbit. These are the right type of followers. Next, we will see why attracting the right type of followers is so important. So far, we have reviewed many different parts and pieces that need planning, execution, and continuous improvement cycles. So, are you overwhelmed yet? This is where the law of attraction comes into play. Take the time to deliberately describe what you need in regards to technology, finances, managers, and volunteers. Once again, Just because much of these are must-do, you don't have to be the one doing or knowing all of it. Use your leadership orbit to attract the right resources, experts, coaches, and volunteers. But you can't attract the right resources if, number one, you don't have a clear mission or vision, two, you aren't clearly articulating and sharing your vision, And three, you are not clear on what type of resources and volunteers that you need. If you're not clear or sure, you attract unclear and mixed results. The more detailed your vision, the better. This is why you need to write down your vision or mission statement and come up with a reasonable strategy or plan to achieve it. The reason I include a sensible and practical strategy in this description is because the more realistic the steps, the less resistance you will have when executing. The less resistant, the more inspired you will be to take action. The more you take inspired action, the faster your results, 
by attracting the right people into your orbit. So be on the lookout for people that can fill in the gaps to your strategy or plan. If you can't identify the gaps, then that would be the place to start. Find a mentor, business coach, or success coach to help you with your vision and plan. They can also help you discover the gaps in finances, resources, and talent as well. Once you have your clear vision, your plan, and have identified the gaps, you can start marketing to the right followers. For instance, if you need help with project management, attracting followers with that skill set should be considered. The same goes for the other gaps. Start attracting resources that have the technology, innovation, creativity, and adaptability that you need. Once the right people are in your orbit, help them with their goals. Encourage their growth and leadership potential. Growing your followers and developing their leadership path will benefit you as well. The leadership orbit is a self-propelling system. As you revolve and rotate around your center, your core values, and your mission, others will do the same. As you attract the right followers into your path of inertia, they will bring with them their own talent and support group, and your solar system is set in motion. Allowing others to be leaders in their own right keeps the magnetic attraction active between you and them. It should be easy and automatic. Therefore, you need to stay focused on your vision and mission, your core value, and focus on what you really want in your staff and followers. As you continue to evolve and develop your message, individuals may fall away, but you will get new followers that are better aligned with your clearer vision. Anyone can learn to be a leader, but if you are not doing it for the right reasons, you will find it difficult to sustain. A good leader does not have to control or force her staff to do her bidding because the goals are already passionately shared among the community. Those members that are not passionate about the message or prepared to perform will drop away. That will be the natural filtering and sorting that you need to create a smooth running, self-reliant organism. So, do not focus on not losing the followers that are dropping away. If you spend time and attention on those that are dropping away, you will cause others to drop away that you really need. You should not be bending over backwards to keep your followers. Don't change your goals in order to keep them in your herd. Rather, continue to focus and attract the right followers by focusing on clarifying your mission or vision. Be open to opinions and solutions to propel your cause forward and bless the others that can't move with you. Let them go their way. This is not to say that your strategies won't change, but they will change because of your overall plan. Your business plan, like your vision statement, is a living document and will continue to change. And you will continue to attract others with the same vision. So, we have covered many tips in a short amount of time. Because I really want you to retain as much as you can, here's a quick review. As you probably realized, in the leadership orbit, every one of us are both followers and leaders. As a follower or a leader, it's recommended to clarify your vision, mission, and goals. Without a clear picture of what you want to be, do, or have, it is difficult to accomplish what you do not acknowledge. The first step in creating your leadership orbit is to expand your mission to beyond just yourself. The larger your vision and mission, the more people with different talents and strengths will be attracted to it. One example we discussed was the goal of living a healthier lifestyle. While this is an important goal for you, it's limited in both breadth and depth. By expanding or blowing it up, as in the Big Bang Theory, into a mission of reducing obesity in children, reach as many more interested followers. 
you now attract schools, after school activities, parents, teachers, athletic coaches, youth groups, churches, and other communities and organizations that are focused on health, fitness, wellness, and children. We also talked about integrity. Say what you mean and do what you say as a way to build your reputation, credibility, and integrity. If you only preach without action, you will attract followers that do the same. Your followers will be all talk with no results. For your leadership orbit to become self-sustaining, you need people with both vision and action. Those that both share your vision and agree with your plans. For your leadership orbit to become self-sustaining, you need people of both vision and action those that share both your vision and agree with your plans and those who are results oriented. You can only attract those types of followers if you are that type of leader. At the end of the day, you attract those that mirror you. We discussed taking the time to deliberately describe what you need in regards to technology, finances, coaches, managers, and volunteers. Once again, just because much of this are must-dos, you don't have to be the one doing it. Use your leadership orbit to attract the right resources, staff, and volunteers that can help you in your path. And at the same time, people you can help in their journey. When the two sides match, you helping them in their goals and they helping you with yours, the leadership orbit is self-sustaining. Make it possible for them to grow into their own leadership path and you will benefit as well. I want this group to start playing a bigger game. I know you can command a bigger stage. It's already in you to excel. The fact that you are here right now means that you are ready to take the next step. Making this work for you. To show my appreciation for your attention today, I want to extend you a special offer. I know your situation is different. I have a few seats available for some one-on-one -on -one consultations regarding how to make this work for you. Because the seats are limited, this is not for everyone. It's only for committed individuals who are serious about their professional advancement. I am devoted to my clients and I want the best for them. My clients succeed because they take action and are ready for success. So for the people here today, email me at laura at lauraleerose.com to reserve your seat. You will receive a follow-up email to select your one-on-one -on -one coaching appointment. Everyone requesting a meeting from this session is guaranteed a complimentary seat. At this time, we'll open up for some questions.